Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you rendering selected media items in Reaper. I have a project in front of me here with four drum loops, and I want to render them individually to create four separate files, one for each. So if we go up here to the file menu, we can choose render. Or we can use the keyboard shortcut, Alt Control R on the PC, or Option Command R on the Mac. And that opens up the render window or dialog. So let's go through this briefly. This section over here decides the output of our render. We could type in a directory right here or browse for it over here. And here we could type in the name of the final file. Let's name it drum loop. And here's the final path of where that file will be saved on a hard drive. Then over here, we could adjust the sample rate, the amount of channels, stereo, mono, multi channel, and the speed of our render full speed offline, real time offline, or real time online, where we could hear the render through our speakers while it's rendering. Then down over here, we could choose the format. We could choose WAV files, AIF, MP3, whatever file format you want. And we could also choose a secondary output format as well, right here. So we could render two files at once for each render. Let's keep it simple and just render one. So if we choose a render button, it's only going to render one file like this. It creates one file for all four loops. And like I said, we don't want that. So instead, we can go up over here to the source and switch it to selected media items. But first, we need to select our items. Right here, one at a time. Or we can just double click this track and it selects all of them. Then let's open up. The render dialog again. Make sure we choose selected media items. And that's going to create four files, as you can see right down here. But before we do that, we should turn off this option right here called tail. It's only really used if we have delay or reverb on our files, and we don't want to cut it off at the end. But in this situation, we're using drum loops. We want to cut them off perfectly so they can loop later. So we're going to turn off the tail function right here. And now we can render these four files. Let's go to the hard drive. And we can see them right here. And they're named drum loop one through four. Let's hear them. And they all start right at the beginning of the file. But we could also name our loops based on the name of the media items. Notice our loops already have a name. Fancy drum loop 7, 11, 17, and 21. If we want to keep those names with our render, we could do that using wildcards. So instead of naming it right here, we can go to the wildcards and choose under Media Item Information, Item. And now it's going to name our files based on the media item's name. But we could also add more information if we want, like the output format, the bit depth, the sample rate. But I'm going to add some tempo information, which is very useful for our drum loop. Go to Project Information and choose Tempo. Now it's going to put the tempo of our file with the render, which kind of makes sense because on our project, I already put tempo changes for each loop 118, 107, 80, 
and 104. So that information is going to go with our render. Let's add BPM to the end. And now it's render those four files again. Go to our hard drive, and we can see them right here with the correct name of each loop and the tempo that goes with it. Perfect. Now it's important to know that when we render our selected items, anything that's happening on this track is going to render as well, which includes the volume or volume automation, panning, and also any effects on the track. For example, if I put a filter on this track right here, That filter plugin is going to be printed when we render our selected items. So let's do it again. Render it right here. And if we listen to our files, they have the filter on them. Because any effects, volume, or pan on this track is going to be printed on our render. If we didn't want that behavior, we probably wouldn't render these files. Instead, we go to the file menu and just choose batch file item converter. And then we can just add them right here, add selected media items, and just convert them right here. And now we get our files the same way, except it didn't print our volume, pan, or effects. So we're not going to hear the filter on these files. But if you do want to render these items through this track and the effects, we would do it by rendering it using selected media items. But it's important to note it's only rendering through this track. It's not affected by other tracks or even the master track on the project. As we can see, I have some effects on the master track. I have a compressor and a limiter, but none of these effects are going to be rendered using this method right here. And also, if we send this track to an effects return, I have a reverb right here. Let's add some reverb to our loop by dragging the routing and dropping it on the reverb. It creates this send. Let's add some reverb to our loops. So now, if we render these loops using selected media items, it's not going to print that reverb or the effects on the master track. Check it out. They're completely dry, with no reverb or master effects being rendered. But if we want to print our effects returns and the master effects, we could do that with a different feature. Just choose, instead of selected media items, selected media items via master, which is going to print or render the files just as we hear it in our project, including our track, our volume, pan, and effects, but also any effect sends and master effects on the master track. Let's delete the filter. Let's print this as it sounds right now. With the reverb and the master effects. Just choose selected media items via master. 
and just render it down here. And once again, it renders four files, but now it printed that reverb and the master effects in the render. So if you want to render your files just through the main track, just choose Selected Media Items. But if you want to render it through any effects sends or master effects, make sure you choose Selected Media Items via Master. Then it's going to print or render everything exactly as you hear it in your Reaper project. So that's pretty much it. That's rendering selected media items in Reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you can use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.